Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Now, today's presenter is Matt Alderson, and Matt is a serial entrepreneur and business expert with over 40 industry awards, including Business Person of the Year and winner of the Australian Business Champion Awards two year running. Uh, over the past decade, Matt has founded and grown a dozen six and seven figure businesses generating over $100 million in revenue and runs the fastest growing business networking organization in Australia and New Zealand and now the US. And that's also spreading to Europe and the UK. So today, Matt is going to share a presentation on how to generate leads via professional networking. Uh, so I'll hand it over to you, Matt, and uh, you're in good hands here. One of the topics that I absolutely love is networking, as you can imagine, uh, being the, the founder of BX. And you know, I believe that networking is one of the highest return on investment activities that you can do for your business in terms of marketing. And uh, most people, though, they get a little bit confused when they turn up to a networking event about why they're there in the first place. So let me tell you what networking is all about and how to generate some great opportunities off the back of networking. So first of all, the goal of networking or the unknown goal, I think, is that uh, there is actually no selling in networking. People think that uh, you come along to a networking event to sell. Uh, and um, that's, that's pretty typical. But what we're actually here for today is about building connections. It's about <coughs> connections and great referral partnerships. That's, that's the goal of networking, really important, to build great referral partnerships. And so today I'm going to take you through how to build some great referral partnerships. Now, we did touch on this a little earlier on as well about what a referral partner is. Uh, let me just recap on that. A referral partner is another business type that serves all the same types of clients that you serve that doesn't compete with you. And so I'll give you some examples of what they look like in a sec as well. So you can start to identify in your network about who some of those referral partners might be. So to give some more clarity around that, there's kind of three levels of uh, potential business that we can gain through networking. Uh, so obviously we have our, uh, we have end clients, direct referrals and referral partners. So our end if we turn up looking for end clients in networking, we won't find many because you know you look around the room, there might be 20 or 30 people and you go, who's gonna buy from me? There's not that many opportunities. Uh, if you uh, then think, okay, what about if people directly refer to me? They might know people that need my products and services. And this is typically where most networking sits these days, where we say, look, you know, uh, if you know somebody that needs my products and services, please tell them about me. Well, I find that most networking organizations and most people we know, you know, if they have a great relationship with you, they will organically refer to you anyway. But this really isn't a strong strategic uh, process or a method of getting new business through networking. The strongest and greatest opportunity we have is through our referral partners, building referral partners through the network. And so like today, when we did our pitch at the uh, BX Online event, we talked about how to grow, uh, sorry, how to connect with our referral partners. So we said today, my, refer my referral partner is this type of business and I would like to connect with them. So if you know this type of referral partner, please give me their contact details. So when you ask for a referral partner, because we're not gonna be selling to them, Everyone here is really excited about giving you their details, about connecting you directly with them, with, about making a warm connection to your ideal referral partner. Because when they do that, they know that you're going to be reaching out to them and talking to them and potentially connecting them with their end clients and creating referral opportunities for them. So you're going to be helping them and probably they'll be helping you as well. So it's a great introduction for us to be making. And that's why it works so well when we're looking to connect with those ideal referral partners. So to think of it this way, you've got here, you've got you sitting in the middle and then you've got all your referral partners sitting around you. Now, I believe a strategy over 12 months for networking should be to gain about five to 10 ideal referral partners. So think about the other businesses out there that serve the same types of clients as you, surround yourself with them so they can refer their clients directly to you. 
as an example, if just say you're a real estate agent, these will be the other types of referral partners that you could possibly deal with. Imagine an architect who are uh, designing homes, you know, that they, they, they would obviously be talking to similar end clients as a real estate agent. Your conveyances, your mortgage brokers are definitely talking to the same types of end clients that real estate agents are. So you could refer your clients to each other. And basically every time you're in front of your clients, you're prospecting them on behalf of your referral partners. You're finding out if they need the products and services that your referral partners offer and you're able to connect them with your ideal clients when they're warm and ready to go. So it's not, there's no cold calling, there's no prospecting cold people. It's all about passing on hot leads to your referral partners because you've already prospected them on their behalf. Some other examples might be sort of in this business sphere here, the professional services, so chartered accountants, commercial lawyers, business brokers, insurers, financial planners, bookkeepers, coaches. There's a few coaches on the call today. So think about these types of businesses and how they will have lots of clients, just like your favorite client now that you'd like to connect more of those with. You can connect them with those through these types of referral partners. Some other examples, you've got um, IT businesses, graphic designers, so more of the marketing style of services. So if you're a marketing business, then these kinds of businesses are great referral partners for you from a marketing perspective. You know, they don't compete with you, but they've got the same end client as you. So we have this blueprint of how to create referral partners. And so this is what I'll take you through really quickly just now. And that's a four stage process. And you can use this with any networking that you do, wherever you go, I encourage you to think of networking as a four stage process. Now, imagine it's like a gym membership. You go, you join the gym. Uh, you, there's obviously you've got to turn up, you've got to do some things at the gym, um, but it's all about, you know, putting in a bit of exercise, uh, you know, eating well when you're at home and getting some consistency with your activity. And that's certainly what it's like with any networking that you do. Networking is not something that you turn up here and you turn up there. It's something that you build a strategy around. No different to like you were investing in Facebook advertising. You wouldn't just put $5 here this week and then $50 there next week. You'd have a strategy around that. You got to do the same with your networking. So ask, connect, explore, commit are the four steps. Let me take you through those quickly. You've done the first one today. So you've succeeded in the ask. And that's simply by asking the network that you're in front of. And most networking rooms these days have the opportunity to do a pitch or a presentation to introduce yourself and your business. So at BX, we run you through this formula. So tell us who you are and what you do. Tell us why you do what you do and tell us who you're looking to connect with. That's the key to the ask. That who being your ideal referral partner. Then the next thing you've got to do is you've got to connect with the people. So what happens is uh, we are going to warmly introduce you to the person that you've asked to be connected with. So through the chat box today, or if you're at one of our live events, you will get a uh, pay it forward slip and you'll have the option to connect with that person. But we want to introduce you first. So whoever is who has offered to connect you, they're going to warmly introduce you to that person so that you're not making a cold call. You're actually being warmly introduced and that person feels obliged to want to connect with you because someone's warmly introduced you. So that's the introduction. We do that via email, but the goal is to get on the phone with that person. We actually want to connect via a phone call and have a phone conversation because networking is actually about relationships and relationships are very hard to build via email. So our goal is actually to have a phone call, a quick 10 minute conversation with our potential referral partners and find out if there's some collaborative opportunities and ways we can help and work together. Uh, so there's some connection emails, templates, and uh, for our guests, we'll share these with you guys today as well. For our members, these are all available on the member exchange. And so if you've offered and had an offer of a connection today, that's an email that you'd send to initiate that connection. And then the person would send this email and they would introduce you to that person as a warm introduction. And then you'd flick an email back and you'd say, hey, you know, great to meet with you. Um, love, you know, thanks Matt for the introduction or whoever and, and great to e-meet you. I love the opportunity to jump on a quick phone call and find out more about what you do. And that's the process. Those three emails get you on the phone. Because as I said, the goal is to have a phone conversation. You're really just identifying if this person's a great referral partner for you or not. So that's the connection stage. The next one is the 
exploration stage. You may notice that we drop the E off all of our X words. We, have, we find lots of X words at BX. So let me tell you about the exploration stage. So it's like this. We jump on a phone call with our ideal referral partners and we ask a couple of questions, three questions in fact. Tell me more about your business. Tell me more about what you do. We're interested to find out about their business. So we let them talk and share about what they do so we can understand maybe how we can connect some of our clients to them if there's possibilities and maybe clients of ours that need their services. Then we also ask them, is there anybody we can introduce them to at the moment? You know, we want to make introductions to them. So we, we find out is, if there's anybody we can introduce them to. And then um, is there something we can do to help, do to help them right now? Uh, and so most people get stuck here. They go, well, you know, what do I ask my referral partners to do? The best thing you could ask your referral partner to do or a potential referral partner to do is share some social media. So your goal, as I mentioned at the beginning, is to have five to 10 great referral partners that you work with on a regular basis, that you're catching up with every couple of weeks. And when you're catching up every couple of weeks, what the action is, the what can I do to help and vice versa, will be to share some social media, a LinkedIn post or a Facebook post. And we know that if your referral partners like, comment and share a post of yours and you have five to 10 referral partners liking, commenting and sharing a LinkedIn post or a Facebook post, you'll get thousands more eyeballs on that particular post right in front of your ideal audience, building that brand proposition, that, that brand credibility for you. It's really powerful. And so you do that for them and they do that for you. It creates some purpose around this conversation as well. And so you've got to create that purpose every time you get on the phone with them. And that was the exploration. You know, it's a quick it's a quick phone call and you find out in 10 minutes whether or not you've got some synergy with that person. If you're feeling the love, feeling the energy, then you move into the next stage, which is the commitment stage. And with any commitment, it takes a little bit of time, but it's 10 minutes every two weeks. So not many hours across a whole year, but we know that when you make that commitment with a referral partner and you catch up every couple of weeks for about 10 minutes and you follow through with those actions, you will generate about $20,000 a year worth of business for, from that particular referral partner. And likewise, you'll be able to generate about $20,000 a year for them. Now, it's amazing how it works out to be always about this $20,000. Uh, it's, it's quite phenomenal, but it's pretty much an average, but it's almost always about the same amount per person. And how that works is like this. If you're a printer, your average job might be say $1,000 and you typically get about 20 jobs, you know, a couple of jobs a month off your, your referral partners. That's pretty standard. Um, but you might be a business coach and your average job might not be $1,000. It might be $10,000 or $20,000 a year. So you might get one or two new clients a year from one of those referral partners. Now, when you sort of compare that and you think about what your average sales worth and you think about how many referrals you might get off a referral partner, you go, yeah, okay, that kind of makes sense. So if you're making that 10-minute commitment once every two weeks for your ideal with your ideal referral partners, the Time proposition versus the return is huge. It's a great return on investment. And so the commitment stage looks like this. It's a phone call every fortnight. I know it's an Aussie term. A fortnight is every two weeks uh, for our American friends here tonight. Uh, so every two weeks, we have a phone call with them, 10, minute, 10 minutes max, like really short, sharp, and punchy. We just ask those two questions. You know, how can I help you uh, this this week? And also, is there anyone I can connect you with? Is there any contacts you're looking to connect with as well? We're actually going to help them build more referral partners from the process as well. And what this does is this keeps us top of mind. So this fortnightly, this every two week conversation, by having that with them, what it means is that when our ideal client lands in their lap or they're in front of them, they think of us first. That's why it has to be every two weeks. We know that if it stretches out to a month, what happens is that top of mind and that awareness about us drops right off. So if we're a real estate agent and we're in front of someone and they're saying, oh, you know, I've just got to get my finance sorted out. If we've met with this person a month ago and had this phone call a month ago, they might not think of us when that client has asked, you know, for us really. But if we spoke to them a week or two ago and someone says to the real estate agent, yeah, I just need to get my finance organized. They'll go, oh, Actually, have you spoken to Matt? He's, you know, this amazing uh, mortgage broker and I do a lot of work with him. He's going to be able to help you out. And we know that that 
every two weeks, that tight time frame of 10 minutes on that phone call and sharing that social media generates that top of mind awareness. And it's really powerful. And your goal through this process is with having it at 10 minutes every two weeks, will achieve about $20,000 worth of new business. And you want to build five to 10 of them. And so you want to generate 100, 200K out of this process on an annual basis. And so we know we've got members, obviously, that generate 20, 30, 40, 50 referral partners. Uh, and they're bringing BDMs on for their business to do that as well. So they can um, really engage and spend that time commitment there. But we know that the average person can achieve five to 10 really good referral partners over a 12 month period to generate that six figures plus. And that's our goal for our members through BX and for anyone that turns up to our networking events. Excellent. That is the end of my presentation. So we've probably got time for a couple of questions here, Terry, as well, I think. Um, so we might just, um, if you've got any questions, you can use the raise hand bar or just do this and I'll find you and, and answer some questions. Uh, so we've got time for a couple. Uh, who has a question today? Or have I answered everything perfectly, told you in detail? Any, any questions at all? We're all in stunned silence. Am I on mute and no one can hear me? <laughs> no, it was a good presentation, Matt. Well done. Excellent. I think Keith's got a question. Keith, far You're away. You're muted. You're on mute. I was going to say, at the risk of sounding a little behind, um, in your presentation, you had uh, you know a, a call every uh, fortnight, which I guess is two weeks, um, and it talked about two questions. And I was not able to hear whether you gave a specific, you know, what the two questions are, or whether you, it was a more of a general, yo, what's up? Great question. So the two questions you would ask your referral partner on a... Uh, every two weeks, it would be one, you know, how can I help you this fortnight? And that's the social media sharing support, or it could be something else uh, as well. But we know that social media sharing really generates some extra activity around your socials and gets some, builds that brand credibility in front of your ideal audience. And the other thing is, is there anyone I can connect you with? Is there anybody I can connect you with um, this week? And by just asking those two questions, it gives the call some purpose because we know what happens is if we don't really create purpose around the call people tend to put off the phone call and and they they go oh we'll just do it next next week or whatever whereas if you've got deliberate action that happens every time you jump on the phone with them uh, the appointment gets kept and you you're actually creating that top of mind awareness off the back of that good question i think Thank you. Craig, you have a question I was actually just touching my face, but I, I do have a question, actually. <laughs> and Matt, this is definitely not a softball question because something that we've dealt with with a long time. Again, um, uh, I, think, I think BX answers a lot of the questions as far as networking in, in this referral um, uh, strategy. Uh, one of the things that we've seen, because we've been trying to create on a smaller level referral partnership groups for a long time, and our experience has always kind of been that you get a lot of gung-ho referral partnerships at the beginning, and then after six months, after a year, they start to get stale because people, you know, a lot of us are small entrepreneurs or, or solopreneurs, and we grow. And all of a sudden, we're, we're growing this direction, or we take on a new initiative, and then, then some, of the, some of the things get stale. How do, you, how, do you, how do you keep them fresh beyond a certain length of time and continue to grow at the same time? So I, I think the easy answer to that is that uh, money drives uh, the results as well. So the, the commitment, so money drives the commitment. If you're coming together every couple of weeks and you're deliberate about that and you've set purpose around that, you will generate referrals for each other quite organically. It just happens because you're top of mind and you're building that relationship. And I know that that drives the commitment to it as well. So one, the purpose uh, and the turning up and the sharing of socials and that activity generates a purpose behind the coming together, which generates new business opportunities off the being top of mind. Uh, most people, they, they, they fizzle off because they're not getting together often enough. So they're not getting referrals. And so it just disappears like that. Uh, but I say every relationship is for a season, a reason or a lifetime. 
And uh, sometimes we're, you know, not meant to be together forever. And that's okay. Uh, we might generate some great opportunities in that process. And, and there might be some referral partners that have a lifetime just because of the, the life cycle that business is in. And that's why you build multiple referral partners. And, you know, so if one stops, it's okay because you're continually building new ones as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you. No worries. And I think Jane had a question as well. Jane, do you have a question? All questions kind of got answered. I just, I am so impressed with this way of networking that we ask that question, what can I do for you? It takes that feeling. Everyone on here is a salesperson, whether we like to think that or not. Oh no, I'm a coach. You're selling coaching services, right? We don't want to be looked at as coach, as salesmen, but we're going out rather than asking for a sale. We're saying, what can I do to help you? And it's so powerful. So I, two things that I think I'm, I, well, that I've already got set up is first of all, my Calendly, an account that you can right away send out a link that they can, your partner can book a time, 15 minutes, that's it. And get it in your calendar. And this is a beautiful way to do business. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jane. Um, awesome. Right. I might wrap up on that point, but, uh, and I'll just, I'll just say as well, uh, we, we have a saying at BX and that is we don't sell to each other, uh, but that doesn't mean we don't buy from each other. And also it just works. The, the less you sell, the more chance there is of people buying. It's like you're holding back and people are like, oh, I want to know what you do because it sounds really great. So talk to me about it. And you're like, oh, okay, well, um, if you're going to twist my arm and it seems to, the more you hold back on the selling, the more likely it is that you're going to have people want to buy from you. But when what happens is the reverse we come in looking for the sale and it propels people. And that's what happens at most networking. You know, you, we come in with business cards and we're, you know, looking for a sale because that's the general culture around networking. Whereas we flip that on its head at BX and it just creates that stronger relationship when you're in the room with people because you're not feeling all salesy. It's about helping each other and it's great. So thanks, Jane. That's a great point as well.